Welcome to Behind the Message, the podcast. I've got a question. Middle name, pop quiz. Do you know my middle name? Brian. Elizabeth? Yes. Does anybody call you Beth? No. <laughs> they call me Laura. <laughs> this is Behind the Message, the podcast. No, we don't need it again. We already did it. It, can, it doesn't, we want to say it again. You <laughs> should Welcome back. All right, we're in Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, last week, we talked about children and parents. Yep. This week, we're in verse 5. You're up. Got it. Bondservants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart as you would Christ, not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bondservants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to man, knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a bond servant or is free. Masters, do the same to them, and stop your threatening, knowing that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and that there is no partiality with him. Okay, so we've built from chapter 4 into chapter 5, this building one another up, uh, this growth into Christ-likeness that anchors us, that lets us stand firm and not be tossed to and fro. Uh, And we see these settings in which we live, we walk according to this calling as Mm -hmm. imitators of God. And quiz, you know all the settings that we've covered in the last few weeks? Yeah, so you've got marriage, you've got family, children, parents, and then now servants, masters. Right. So all these are like institutions uh, that are set up by God. One, you've got marriage. Mm -hmm. You got parent child, and you essentially what we would acknowledge is really these societal institutions that are outside of the family. Yeah. So government, workplace, mm-hmm. that type of a setting. So if you'll take that broader view, and especially in our cultural context, don't sure. get so lost on like servant. the servant master yeah. stuff. Uh, it'll help you, not because you're trying to avoid that, but but that's just not the main point of this. He's using those societal institutions Mm -hmm. to say this leaves the home and it goes out, out into the workplace, out into the government, and goes beyond. When you hear this one, having heard the previous ones, what are the similarities that jump out to you? Oh, that's funny that you ask that, because I was actually thinking as I'm reading and that, you know, sometimes can get you in trouble to think and try to read at the same time. But I'm, I'm thinking of just how many, like, similarities there are that are not even really specific to just this one uh, relationship of application. And so you have all of these different phrases that are all packed into just this one sentence. So you have a sincere heart, and you have, as you would Christ, and you have doing the will of God from the heart, and you have rendering service with a good will as to the Lord, not to man. And so you have just this idea of, uh, go back to what we talked about last week, authority that ultimately is the Lord's, and then that is delegated to these institutions. And so ultimately then, as, uh, as individuals kind of under authority, our obedience is first and ultimately to the Lord. So you have all of these phrases that that uh, just really are similar in how we uh, walk according to our calling. So the way that you will interact in marriage and the way that you will interact in family and the way that you will interact in these kind of workplace right. settings are not separate things but they are all uh, applications of how we walk according to our calling. Right. I, I, I noticed the same thing, too. Again, if you missed the, the pod last week, go back and listen to it. The pod? Yeah, we're cool. That's what we call it now. Um, and Got so, it. catch up. So, <laughs> so we obey. Well, that obey word's used again, child, yeah. obey your parent, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, but it's really contextually very similar to love as Christ love. Mm-hmm. Uh, submit, uh, you are essentially dying to self and your desire, as you said it, and then you are, with Mm self-control, walking differently. And I love how he breaks that down in this particular setting because he says, as you pointed out, with a sincere heart, as you would Christ, 
not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. The point being, as an act of worship unto the Lord, yeah. not just how it's seen necessarily by others. Mm -hmm. So we do this all the time, and it's worth just slowing down and I think thinking through it. When we talk about for eye service, when we go out of our home and we go out into the world, we are so aware of our image, how we're perceived, how we look, uh, how we want others to take us from all the time and energy we'll put into our look, our fashion, the words that we say, everything else. If we're honest, we are often way more concerned with the way people perceive a thing sure. than the reality of the thing. Yeah. So we would rather be perceived well, mm -hmm. even if inside we are not well and need help. Yeah. Uh, we, we operate as people pleasers. So in other words, we take the aim of these relationships and we twist them toward what I would gain from the other person. Now, if you remember back in Matthew, Jesus talks about this in like fasting. And mm -hmm. uh, he says, listen, if you fast and essentially you're just trying to show off that right. you're fasting and everybody's like, look at that guy. He really loves the Lord. The guy who prays on the street corner with all of the empty words. That's right. Yeah. They're doing it not as an act of worship. They're doing it to gain some type of social benefit from others. So here he's saying back to the servants, to their masters, you don't obey them just so that you gain favor with them. Right. You obey them as a life unto the Lord as an act of worship. Why? Because you recognize, just like parents with children, God has put that authority figure in your life. Uh, in Romans, Paul says, you know, like those rulers, and he uses the word for deacon, which is just servant, right? He goes, they're God's servant. So the president of the United States, regardless who it is now and who it will be in the fall, is a deacon of God. He's a servant of God. He has no authority except that which God gives him. And so we see in him something so much beyond yeah. just that particular role. It's authority in there. So the same thing with the parents. So when someone goes, well, wait a minute. What if my parent's not a believer in the thing they asked me to do? Well, that breaks the authority there. It's the same thing here. Sure. But when it's in line, when it doesn't withhold, I am obeying. I'm doing it because I just want to somehow impress that person. Mm -hmm. No, I want to walk differently yeah. unto the Lord, recognizing his authority in every aspect mm -hmm. of life. I'll give you one parallel, then I'll let you run with it. I think it's one of the things that's missed if we don't teach tithing and regular giving mm. in our homes with our kids and with one another. When we worship in our giving, God doesn't need our money. Like it's not like it works that way. We give as an act of worship, not out of routine, not out of obligation. But when we set aside and we give those first fruits, when we give on a regular basis and we give, what we do is we worship and acknowledge God sustains me. You are the authority. You are creator. You're sustainer. My life is in you. I trust these things with you. And so you're living, acknowledging the authority, the sovereign presence of God in your life. You don't do that. And you say, well, I'll do it if I get more. You're beginning to separate him from the practical day in, day out relationship. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, I think um, even as you're talking, thinking about eye service and perception and how much we, in our, especially in our culture, can tend to be driven by how things are, how we are perceived and received by others and, and even people pleasers in that. It, it's so reminiscent for me of when we're talking about like speaking the truth in love and what does it really mean to be loving. And we, we talked through all of the lies of, well, if they don't, perceive it as loving, then it's not loving. And so it, it uh, separates authority when we think about it that way. Like, does the person get to define what's loving? Does the person get to define what is service or does God? And so it's such a reminder, I think, for, for me and for us that we better know the word because if we're going to know uh, 
authority and how to rightly respond to it, that's going to come from God's word. And there's so many different implications for that. So you mentioned tithing. Another one that's come up several in in the last couple of weeks is as we've been talking about like marriage and family, uh, why is it important for us as a church, whether you're married, whether you have kids or not, to have a biblical worldview of these things is because it is just as much my responsibility to help you grow in Christ likeness as a husband and a father. And so if I don't understand what that looks like from Scripture, uh, then I'm left to rest on the authority of my own experience and my own thoughts and opinions as opposed to the authority of the Word. And so you just see so many, like, uh, just connections back to everything that we've been talking about. I mean, it's almost like this was written as one letter. Almost like And it. not as just, not as several different paragraphs. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Verse 7 then, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord yeah. and not to man. That's a real challenge. And then at the end, I like that he flips it back to masters mm-hmm. and he closes and he says, um, masters, do the same to them and stop your threatening, knowing that he who is both their master and yours. Yeah. In other words, this goes back to the authority thing we were talking about before. Right. Your ultimate authority mm-hmm. is in heaven, and that there is no partiality with him. Yeah. Meaning, you may have some measure of earthly authority mm-hmm. over another. You may be a boss, a supervisor, whatever that is, in some setting. But to the Lord... Your value, your worth, your th- you have no measure of partiality yeah. distinguishing you from those people. Yeah. So they stand at equal footing mm-hmm. at the cross. I mean, we, well, you it's like when you talk about marriage, you have marriage as a picture of Christ in the church. Well, and at the end of the day, we're all the bride. That's right. Like in new creation, we are the bride. And so here at the end of the day, we're all servants. That's right. That's right. And so if that master gets that, then there is the awareness, again, that the authority that has been given to them is something they are stewarding and is not their own. It's not a personal thing. Now, they may think, well, like, I'm competent. Well, who gave you the brain to think? They may think, well, I worked hard. Who gave you? Like, all of that really is a measure of grace given to you by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Without him, you do not have the breath to breathe, right? And so to be able to step back from that is a humbling of yourself. Again, we've seen that in this section as well. Uh, And a real awareness to walk, to lead in this case, with the love of Christ, yeah. that would give up yourself, lay down your earthly freedoms, mm-hmm. and die to that kind of thing, yeah. in order to build them up. So think this way, be like this. It's yeah. really cool. I'm gonna make a tie really quick. So our family discipleship plan, big truth this week is God is satisfied, and so part of that is that there is nothing outside of God that God needs. He is satisfied in Himself, and we are not. Yeah, right. You think about all of the things that are outside of us that we need uh, to live, to sustain. Last week, God is keeper. He is the one who sustains his people. And so in this kind of setting and application, when we're talking about authority, we will never be satisfied in any earthly authority because it exists to point back to God who is in himself satisfied. And so as we relate uh, and as we seek to be faithful to these charges and commands, uh, I think it's so important that we just keep that in mind. And ultimately, we're doing these things like this says, as to the Lord. All right. The people have spoken, by the way. The, okay. They missed the have popsicle you? jokes. They, they definitely did. And so I have, you- a, uh, I have a person, that's all I'll say at the moment, a person who wants to come on and share their popsicle joke. So we're going to make that happen for you real soon, and uh, we'll just leave it there as a cliffhanger. Um, it's going to be awesome. I'm pretty excited about it. So we're going to have to bring back a little, I little love bit of popsicle. Cliffhangers in suspense. Are you? Do you so have much. one like ready? You got one? No, of course not. No, you do you? No, no, no. I'll save it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, uh, again, great section that we've just kind of closed down in these settings. As we look ahead to next week we're reminded this thing that we're in, it's not like just a walk in the park. This is a battle. This is a war. Mm -hmm. 
And so as you get uh, further into chapter 6, be mindful. Uh, these are heavy things. They're real, uh, and we have an enemy that seeks to destroy us, but we have the truth of who Christ is in which we can stand firm and uh, really withstand those yeah. attacks and do so as light. So, again, be encouraged, uh, and see you guys next week. Yeah.